gets by with his smarts and he's able to get in position. But even if he's able to get in position, I mean, it takes him, you know, an extra 10 seconds to get there where before it was five seconds. And Roman yeah. Roman Hulk has never been the fastest guy. So, I mean, but what Von Bell is doing is definitely helping. And I, if, if Von Bell can continue to progress the way that he is, I actually think the Saints will restructure Jerry Bird and keep him yet another year because, let's be honest, who's going to want Jerry Bird? I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, think, I don't think people are lining up and knocking on the door to be like, you know what, trade us, trade him here, trade him here. And that's one thing that I, I tend to try to, you know, kind of, you know, get fans or, or, or anyone of the like in, in kind of perspective. A lot of times fans just say, trade him or get rid of him. And, you know, let's just bring in this guy. But the idea of it all is, is if you think this guy is such a bum, he's such a bad player, what makes you think other teams are going to want him? Well, well, because I want him. Well, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, the best trades in any sport hurt both teams. Hurts a little bit. For yeah. instance, Brandon Cooks, if the Saints were to trade him, it would hurt a bit because you lose a lot of that deep speed that the offense is kind of lacking. But mm -hmm. if you gain a corner that, that's able to help out bro, well, yeah, it kind of hurts both teams because cornerbacks are, you know, they, they kind of, you know, they're kind of the wave of the future, man. You know, you got to have great corners because the NFL is a passing league. So it yeah. has to hurt both teams. For some, for some reason, fans just don't understand that part. Well, I think another good example, because I want to make sure I, I – um don't get too much in the cooks thing because i don't <laughs> i'm very anti-trading cooks let me just go ahead and throw that out there and i know um our friend barry over at big easy believer just came out with if cooks were to be traded these five places that would help us i, I just don't i'm not getting in that because i think cooks is the best flanker that we've had in a long time and to to get rid of that would really hurt so i'm not jumping in that but uh just to throw in a trade like what you're saying that hurt both teams but help both teams would be the Jimmy Graham trade. I mean, it hurt the Saints because, as you're seeing now, Ben Watson did fill in a year. He did very well. But you can tell the Saints are missing Jimmy Graham when we're trying to throw to Fleener or Josh Hill. You can tell it's just not the same that we had before. But we, you know, it, that hurts. But we also got the best center that we've had in a very long time. You know, he is a good quality center. Pro Bowl level, maybe not as good as he was doing in Seattle, but that entire offensive line was a little stronger. And we ended up getting Stephon Anthony. Now, I know everybody's going to say, well, Anthony's been horrible. He hasn't played. He sits on the bench this year. And that's true. That's because the system's changed. He's not designed to run the system that Dennis Allen is employing, but he's trying to learn. And if you watch the Tampa game, Stephon Anthony did not have a bad game. Overall, he had a good game. Now, was it a great game in coverage for him? No, it wasn't. However, there is definitely improvement if we're to take samples from Tampa game and compare it to, say, the Atlanta game. And I know that's going back pretty far in the year, but beginning of this year when he had to play against Atlanta, he looked bad. You know, he was good at peeking at the run, but every time he got in coverage, it was just look, seemed like there was an opportunity that he was going to get burned the Saints were going to pay for it, and there's going to be a touchdown. And I'm not trying to hurt his feelings should he ever listen to this podcast. It's just how things work because he had not yet adapted to the system. He wasn't ready to play zone. It's just not who he was, where he was at. Now, though, he seemed to have improved a little bit. I definitely want to see more. You know, I've already mentioned there was one play in particular that really worried me that did not pan out into a bad play. You know, and that was that play where he lined up on the outside having to do man coverage on a on a play that was designed to go to the end zone didn't end up hurting us and I, i'm I'm happy for that but that, that shows that there's still some improvement that needs to be done for him if he's going to continue in a as a middle linebacker in dennis allen's system all that being said to say this it hurt the saints to trade away jimmy graham but they got two good things that helped build them for the future and how it ends up being in, in another three years after, you know, those players have probably hit their primes and start to decline, what we'll just have to see. I still believe the Saints got the better end of the deal out of that because we've, even with Jimmy gone, we still lead, lead the, you know, league in yardage. We still do pretty well in scoring. But it obviously hurts to lose a guy of that caliber, of that talent. But it's not a, a, it's not a death sentence.
Brian, you currently helping her out? That's fine. If you are, I will take care and keep going until you can get back to us. Since you're being quiet, I assume that's what you're doing. Shout out to Brian for helping out a lady who had a flat tire. It's pretty awesome. He's on the road right now, but that's fine. I got to reply to a tweet real quick because y'all sent it to me. Sorry for the dead space. It's just tough for me to talk and type at the same time. Sorry about that, Deuce. You're right, man. I just, I just kind of helped out a little bit, and I want to black out some background noise. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. fine. Man. I was able to take care of it, man. So uh, hopefully, awesome. you know, they can get back to Mobile safely, which is, you know, my, my the biggest thing. And oh man, it's you know, it's crazy that you never know, man. You never know. I just, you know, as payment enough, I just want them to pay it forward. You never know, and. She, you know, yeah. told me God bless and stuff like that, which is, that, that's all I need right there. So, uh, you know, everybody can do their part and never, never hurts to help out. That's what, you know, for sure. Yeah, definitely, man. And I'm, I'm proud of you for throwing that out there because too many people, like I said, will just drive on by and not care. And, and that's not what society needs to be, especially in, in today's world. I mean, I, I've always looked at it this way, dude, and I know, you know, anybody that knows me from Twitter probably thinks I'm the total opposite of the person that I am, <laughs> which is unfortunate because, you know, I mean, the person that you see on Twitter, it's not necessarily not me, and I don't want to mislead anybody. When I when I tweet something, I'm not doing it for shock value. I really am saying what I'm saying. But it doesn't take away from the person that I am, and unfortunately, a lot of you don't get to see that part of me. But the reality of it is that Especially after going through Katrina, we're all one event away from being homeless or, you know, uh, jobless yeah. or anything like that. So it doesn't ever hurt to just take the extra time out to help out. So, you know, if you can, do it. If you can't, then, you know, at least your heart was in the right place. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I'm with you on that. As someone, you know, because, you know, when my grandmother lost her home and everything, that's you, you never forget that. and That sticks with you. And you never want anybody to have to experience that. I mean, I've got people that, shocker, you know, the reverend, guess what? I'm human. I'm a guy. I have problems. But, I I mean, I have people that I just have no desire to see again in my life. We're not friends. We won't be friends. But I would never wish anything like that on them ever, you know, for anybody to have to experience. So, that I mean, that's just how I am. So, I mean, I feel you on that. And it's kind of like, and I'll just use that as an example. I know you and Brian from California really can't stand each other. But if that guy was stranded on the side of the road, car on fire, you'd go help him out. You might talk trash about him after on Twitter, but you'd go help him out. And then I think that is, and I said this earlier in the show, that's what Louisiana, that's what we are. I mean, we are one big family because nobody wants us. We got to stick together. I would definitely talk trash to him. But, I mean, the, the, the idea of it all is that, I don't necessarily hate him to where I'm going to ever see something bad happen. That's not the type of person that I am. But I would definitely talk a little trash about it, you know, a little trash to him. But, you know, it'd be all in good fun because at that particular moment, it's not about our petty differences. It's about making sure somebody's okay. So that would be the way that would go. At any rate, let's get back to what we do here. Back to football. Yeah, so back to, back to sports. I, I did miss the last part of your commentary. I know uh, a lot of times there's Twitter questions, so if there are any out there, do you know, we just got to tag on them as well. But uh, I really – there is something that I want to say about the defense, and I, I can't believe I'm about to say this. I know you were speaking on Stephon Anthony and then the Jimmy Graham trade and how that, how that worked out, but I think the Saints just may still need to go offense. Yeah. Early in the draft. Maybe not first round pick, but or, or maybe do some type of maneuver to where you can acquire an additional pick. I don't I just I feel like there's something missing to this offense. And it could be, if not Jimmy Graham, Darren Stroll, Reggie Bush. And insert your name here, Pierre Thomas. Versatile running back. Now not to say Mark Ingram isn't. Which I feel like it's a shame he's not getting, you know, more touches even after the fumble situation. Mark Ingram has been the Saints' best player over the past couple of, you know, maybe since the benching. He's been the Saints' the best offensive player. But yeah, I just think the Saints are missing something on offense. And I really believe a guy like Christian McCaffrey 
would almost open up the offense to where Sean Payton can be Sean Payton again. And I know a lot of people are going to get mad at the idea. The Saints know the Saints need to draft defense. Their first seven picks need to be defense. I get it. I know the Saints need defense. But make no mistake about it. If the Saints don't have an offense, which we've seen, take no more than a a snapshot of the last two weeks, versus Detroit and versus Tampa, if the Saints can't score, they're worthless, no matter how great the defense is. That, you know, it's, it's not the 85 Bears we're talking about on the field. The defense needs someone to score to help it because our defense doesn't create turnovers. Just don't. Well, I, I'm, I'm not saying I disagree with you, but we got a caller, so I want to hear what the caller's got to say. Sean from Monroe, you're on Hudak Confessional. What's up, buddy? Hey, good evening, guys. How are you guys doing this evening? Good evening. We're doing well. Thanks for the call. Well, I, uh, you sound New Orleans, but I, I happen to know that that your co-host there is, and it is. It makes me ashamed that uh, we've been friends for so long and we've never seen each other face to face. Yeah. <laughs> How are you tonight, Ref? I'm doing well, man. As well as can be after these past two weeks of Saints football. Yeah, the, these things will make a uh, staunch Christian consider alcoholism. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been that uh, bad. I wanted to uh, to ask you guys. Um, we're I'm getting ready to do our show now, and uh, one of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight is. Um, you know, I don't want to take the, the low-hanging fruit with uh, what's happened to the offense or is it time for Peyton to go. Uh, what do you guys expect to see out of the last three uh, three weeks of the season now that we're basically jockeying for draft position? Well, I think I'll tackle it first. One, I'll say this. Um, don't expect, you know, that most of the Saints players to play any different. Guys like Drew Brees, Roman Harper recently came out and talked about it. Mark Ingram, you know, Cooks, any of these guys to really take a step off unless Sean Payton tries to put them on the bench because that's just who they are. They're, they want to win regardless of – I mean, you see it with Drew. I mean, these past two weeks, that guy was pressing hard to make something happen because he wants to win. There's, these players aren't – you know, they're not dumb. They're smart. They realize what the state of the team, where they're at. They know that even if they had made the playoffs – the odds of them making the Super Bowl and winning are extremely low. I mean, they're not just completely oblivious or blinded because they're on the team. They think that they're the best in the NFL. They realize that they need to work on some things. You know, I've been able and blessed to talk to some, so I know that there's not this just, you know, rose-colored glasses things going on. Now, Sean might be kind of different. Sean has shown – in the past that while he's not necessarily going to bench players and you've seen this kind of start, he'll put players on IR and then have other players, you know, younger guys step up and get more playing time or like with the Kenny Vaccaro situation. Yeah. That's you know, what I was about put, let say. him, let him um, serve his suspension now and then give Von Bell more of an opportunity to grow and, and see where he's going to progress. And I think you'll see guys like, you know, on Yamada, his snap count go up. You'll, you'll see, Stephon and Anthony start to get a lot more snaps starting to see if he can adjust to this Dennis Allen zone defense. That's what I expect that you can see. Not that the team is going to tank, even though in terms of draft position, we're not going to say they should, but we wouldn't be mad should they lose out three and we get a better pick. Nobody's going to be mad because it's not like we have a chance in the playoffs now. But I think that's yeah. what you can kind of expect. Players to try to do good for personal reasons because the team reasons kind of out the door. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, I don't, I don't like you said. I, I don't expect the philosophy or the approach to change much. Um, I, I was just, uh, I guess maybe what I was sort of left-handedly asking was, do do we look for any guys um, to be kind of uh, like you made reference to? put on IR or just kind of uh, basically the long and short of it benched to protect them? Well, I think the guys that you have to consider for that, uh, first that comes to mind would be, and this also depends on the level of their injuries. And as Sean Payton has made very clear in 